bless him, Lord. Yeah, we ask him to speak through him. Come and speak to us through him, Lord. And we bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lawrence. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you. Welcome back to 2023. Welcome back to church. (laughs) Welcome, everyone, online. Good to to have you guys with us today as well. And um, it's good to be back, right? Everyone happy to be back? Who's excited to be back in church? Yes, Yes, who's excited for 2023? Yeah, 2023. Good stuff. Um, Yeah, Time of year when often we can look back on 2022, look back and see what happened, what God did, perhaps disappointments, expectations, but then to look ahead. It's a fantastic time of year to look ahead, to just pause, have a look forward, think about those expectations, those plans, those hopes, those dreams. Um, And I'd ask you the question, not to shout out to me now, but to just take a moment to just pause and to think, what are you expecting in 2023? What are you hoping for? What are you believing for this coming year? This year that we're in now, it's already started. We're eight days in. But what are you hoping for? What are you expecting in 2023? Think along the lines of your family, perhaps. Some friendships, um, perhaps housing, where you live, a career. um, Perhaps your ministry, what you're involved in with church, connect groups, or where you serve. What are you expecting? What are you hoping for? What are you believing for? personally. I'd encourage you guys to take some time this week as we, as as Lawrence has mentioned there, we're going to be fasting and praying this week to take some time and to look ahead and to just get alone with God and say, God, what are you wanting to do this year? What are you expecting? Here as a church, what are we believing for? What are we, what are we expecting this year? Well, I can answer that one, that we are believing God for heaven on earth here in Slough. We live to glorify God, we live to make disciples of all nations, and we live to make a difference in the lives of our community, in the lives of here in Slough. This is where we're positioned, and we're all about seeing heaven on earth here in Slough, in and through us, God moving miraculously through our lives as they are surrendered to Him. And as Steve Murrell, that's the um, president of, uh, or the the sort of, the, 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 the founding pastor, you could say, of every nation is that we are entering this week um, of, of, of global consecration, prayer and fasting, expecting the supernatural, expecting God to do signs and wonders in and through us. And the title of my message today is, um, what, sorry, <laughs> how to prepare yourself. What are you going to do to prepare yourself for an extraordinary 2023? What are you going to do to prepare yourself for an extraordinary 2023? How do you prepare yourself? What do we need to do? What are you believing for? What are we as a church believing for together? In an extraordinary 2023, but how? What does that look like? There's a great promise for us that Steve mentioned in that scripture um, out of Joshua. It says, tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. There's a slide for this, Sam. The promise. Tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Who needs some amazing things done in their lives this year? Yes, anyone? Hands up. Yeah, I need God to do some amazing things in my life this year, and I'm expectant for that. Do you need it? I think, you, I think we can all agree that we do need it. In our relationships, or our, our, our families, our work, we need God to show up and to do some amazing things in our lives. There's a slide now, Sam, for Joshua, the book of Joshua. So we had Steve Murrell, and he, he mentioned that verse out of Joshua. We're going to go and read it now. It's in the book of Joshua, uh, chapter 3. So once you turn there, there is a slide for it so that you can follow. Am I still on? Yes. Joshua, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Okay. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Shittim. And they came to the Jordan he and all the people of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. At the end of three days, the officers went through the camp and commanded the people, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. Yet there shall be a distance between you and it, about 2,000 cubits in length. 
Do not come near it, in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. This word wonders, I know there's another reference to amazing. We said that God's going to do amazing things. Wonders. What is this? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's essentially the extraordinary. It's the supernatural. It's that which we cannot do on our own. Wonderful things, amazing things. The message translation of the Bible says miracle wonders. Okay? The unexpected, more than we've expected, more than we can expect. That is what this word wonders or amazing things means. That which is not ours to do, it's in our own strength impossible to do. But through God and His work, He's the one who does it. It's beyond our power. It's too difficult in our own strength. But with God, and we know His Word says, all things are possible through Him. And so this wonders, this amazing thing, this extraordinary 2023, it is only in and through the power of God and His Spirit. So when we look at this text, we see who will do it. It says, the Lord will do it. He says, when will He do it? He says, tomorrow He'll do it. You know, what we do is what this message today is all about. What we're expecting for tomorrow is what we have to do today. There's something that we need to do. In order to prepare for an extraordinary tomorrow, we start with consecrating ourselves today. And that is my one point today, that the preparation for this extraordinary tomorrow begins with consecration today. Begins with consecration today. So we're going to look at this word consecration. What is it? What is consecration? There's some questions there. What is it? Why and how do we, why and when do we need it? And how will we do it? We've got those questions up. So what is it? Why and when do we need it? And how will we do it? So what is it? What is consecration? It is dedicating ourselves to a divine purpose. The, the dictionary definition would say it's a formal dedication to a divine purpose. It's to make or declare sacred, especially to devote irrevocably to the worship of God by a solemn ceremony. It's dedicating ourselves to His purposes, to His plans, to dedication. It's in, in, in the Old Testament, we see Moses in Leviticus. He, he, he would take the anointing oil and he'd go throughout the tabernacle. The tabernacle was the tent where they, that they set up very specific design that, that, that God had instructed them. And he would go with the anointing oil and he would dedicate, he would anoint, he would cover the various instruments with oil, dedicating it to the service of God. Someone once said, in conversion, God gives to me, but in consecration, I give to God. In consecration, I give to God. Conversion, when we come to Jesus, when we choose to follow him, he comes to us. He does that through the power of Jesus, through what Jesus did on the cross for our sins. And we are converted. We become followers of Jesus. But as we follow him, we choose to consecrate our lives to him, to give our lives to him, to dedicate ourselves to his service. In conversion, God gives to me, but in consecration, I give to God. I love this. It's, it's, it's that taking the ordinary, it's taking the everyday and giving it, surrendering it to God. Saying, God, here it is for your purposes, for your glory. It's a surrendering. It's this transfer of ownership. It's no longer mine. We don't, we don't look and examine our lives in the context of this is mine. There's this divide you see often in, in our thinking that this is church and then this is, this is, this is me. This is my stuff. There's my life, and then there's my life at church. No, consecration, it, 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 uh, it erases the line between secular and sacred, between what is ours and what is God's. When we consecrate ourselves, we're giving all. We're giving everything to Him. We're saying, God, there is no limit that you can... There's no, there's no boundaries. God, everything, everything is for you. It's all for you. There's no boundary lines that He can't cross. 
It removes that line between church life and our own lives. It's not about, you're not just God's when you're here at church or when you're attending a prayer meeting or when you're leading your connect group or attending a connect group. Or you're not just God's when you're reading the Bible and doing something holy, but you're actually God's all the time. We belong to him and consecration is that acknowledgement that I belong to him and I'm going to surrender the everyday. I'm going to surrender the going to work, the, the chatting with my family, the goals and dreams that I have for my life. I'm going to surrender these things to him and say, Lord, would you, would you consecrate it? As I, as I consecrate myself, as I dedicate myself to you, would you take this, Lord? See, it's rooted in this, in this idea of, of, of sacred, sacred. You know, something consecrated is dedicated to God, and therefore it's sacred. You know, it's not a flippant decision when we choose to consecrate ourselves. It's not like a New Year's resolution that we decide, oh, well, this year I'm going to do a bit more of this or a bit less of that. How many know that often our New Year's resolutions end up um, pretty shattered within a, within a couple of months of the year? And consecrating ourselves to God, dedicating ourselves to His purpose, it's not the same as a New Year's, as, as a New Year's resolution. It's not a flippant decision. It's an intentional, serious, God, I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to give this year to you. I'm going to give my life to you. I'm going to serve you with all that I am. It's formal, intentional dedication. Separating yourself for a holy purpose. Who knows that a holy purpose is not just standing up front here and teaching the word of God. A holy purpose is like what Esther described, being in the operating room. That's where God has called her. A holy purpose is being a mom or a dad at home with the kids. A holy purpose is out at work fixing cars or cutting meat or teaching kids. Those are all holy purposes. We sanctify ourselves. We give these to him saying, Lord, use me where I am. Consecration is this preparation for receiving the promise. This promise that God is going to do extraordinary things. And what we do today sets us up for those extraordinary things tomorrow and beyond. Yes? What we do today starts that process. We, we, we prepare ourselves to receive what God wants to do. This next season, this 2023. Why and when do we do it? Why do we consecrate ourselves? When do we consecrate ourselves? The context of this verse in Joshua actually helps a lot. It's always good, just a little helpful tip here, to read the Bible in context, to see what comes before, what comes after these passages that we read and think about. And so before this, we've got the nation of Israel. Okay, they'd been enslaved in Egypt. They'd been in, the, in, 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 the, they'd been in bondage as slaves to the, to, to the Egyptian nation Really bad. It wasn't like a good thing. It was a really bad thing, this slavery, okay? And then God delivers them through a guy named Moses. Moses was the guy who led them, and he led them out of slavery, out of Egypt, okay? Incredible. But then they wandered around, wandered around the wilderness, the desert, for 40 years, okay? So they've been wandering, and now they stand under another guy's leadership named Joshua, and they're at the bank of the River Jordan, they're here, there's the river, they're looking over to the promised land, okay? So that's where they are. So to move into the new, you need to do something significant to separate yourself from the past. And we see that these guys, these Israelites, when they left Egypt, did they consecrate themselves? They didn't. They fled for their lives. They ran. They just got their stuff, as God had instructed through Moses, and they ran, okay? God parted the sea, they ran through on dry ground, the sea got covered up, and, and the Egyptian forces were destroyed. But they didn't consecrate themselves. And then we know that they wander around the wilderness for 40 years. When we look at the geography, it's not such a far trip from where they, land, from where they were to where they needed to go. But in that 40 years of wandering, they were disgruntled, and they actually started longing for some of the stuff in Egypt. They started wishing that they were back there, perhaps. Or, or they would complain to Moses and say, oh, when we, when we were in Egypt, we had this, we had that. And how many of us 
can admit that sometimes we find ourselves longing for stuff that we know is bad for us. I mean, this is ridiculous. They are free now, yet they are still in bondage to what they had in Egypt. They didn't consecrate themselves. And we see, we get to the scripture here in Joshua, where Joshua commands them, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among us. Standing on the brink of the river, on the, on, the, on, the, on the edge of the river, to what they knew was coming, and they needed to consecrate themselves. They needed to do something significant to separate from the old and to be prepared for the new. So maybe now, as I take a moment and go, what do I actually need to separate myself from in 2022? What have I brought over from 2022 into 2023? What are some of those things, some of those perhaps those bad habits that we find ourselves going back to that we know we don't need, like the Israelites? What are some of those things we need to cut off and consecrate ourselves from? See some examples where, where there's, there, there's a, a, a sort of consecration and a dedication moment, and there's a crossing from the old into the new. We see into a new calling. Sometimes when we're called into something new, there's a consecration that needs to take place. We see Jesus before he was called into his ministry, before he actually started ministering to people and teaching in the synagogues and helping people and doing miracles, doing signs and wonders, he actually spent 40 days in the desert fasting and praying, dedicating himself. We see starting a new project there can be consecration and prayer. We see that in the book of Chronicles when they were building the temple. He said, now who will consecrate himself to the Lord today? So before they started this undertaking, this huge project of building this tabernacle, this place of worship, they consecrated themselves. They fasted. They prayed. They waited on God. Taking on a new role. We know that the priests in the Old Testament and the New, when they would be dedicated to the Lord's service to serve as a priest, they would consecrate themselves and pray. When we don't know what's next, <clears throat> We can consecrate ourselves. We see here, the verse before, verse 5 in, in Joshua 3. Verse 5 is what we're looking at, but verse 4, he says, Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go, for you have not passed this way before. So sometimes we need to consecrate ourselves when we don't know what's next. We don't know what God is doing next. And then again, we see Joshua says, Let's consecrate ourselves, guys. Let's not just rush across the river. Because yes, there's great promise across the river. That's the promised land. That's where they're called to go. But there's also giants. We know that the, the, the scripture tells us the giants. There was Jericho, the city of Jericho that they actually had to take. So as much as there's promise and expectation and extraordinary, there's the preparation that needs to happen within before we can go there. Because we need God in, to enable us to do this. Who knows that they couldn't just go there in their own strength. God said that he would be the one who would drive out their enemies before them. Consecration is also just being still and knowing that God is God, that he is on his throne and that you are his. So this week when we consecrate ourselves, we take time to acknowledge who is God, what is he doing, and how can we surrender ourselves to him. To be wholehearted about something takes more than a decision. It's a dedication. It's an expression of faith and trust in God. When we're consecrating ourselves, it's this expression of faith and trust in Him. And it costs all of us. It's all of us. It's not just certain parts. We notice how the Scripture says, consecrate yourselves. Not consecrate certain parts. Not consecrate this part, but leave the other part. It's consecrate yourself. Yourself individually. Yourself as a community. Consecrate yourselves. It's everything. It costs all of us to gain all of Him. Who you're devoted to, someone else said this, it's a great quote. Who you're devoted to will determine who you devote yourself to. Who you are devoted to will determine what you devote yourself to. I mean, that's a great litmus test there. Just think about yourself. What are you devoted to? What, what takes up? What occupies? Your thinking, your time, your energy, your money. Who you are devoted to will determine what you devote yourself to.
We know Jesus, in the book of Mark, he says, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow. So how do we do what he asks? Well, we dedicate our lives. We dedicate everything. There's this great scripture in in Romans 12, verse 1, in the message translation, I'm going to read it here. It says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, your ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, and you're walking around life. And place it before God as an offering. Take everything that we are, everything that we do, and place it before God as an offering. And again, a question, what will you choose to dedicate to God this year? What do you choose? What are you going to choose to give him? Is it your heart? Is there a longing and deep inside of your heart that you actually know you need to commit to God or recommit to God? Maybe it's your talents. Maybe it's the things that you're good at, what God's gifted you with. Maybe you're really good at certain things. Maybe it's actually just saying, I need to surrender this to God. I need to dedicate this to God. Maybe it's money, your time, your serving. What will you dedicate? What will we dedicate to God this year? And the third question was, how will we do it? How are we going to do it? Well, as we've already said, we're going to start by joining this week of prayer and fasting. I encourage you and challenge you, will you start? Will you enjoy? Will, will you join this week of prayer, fasting, and consecration with us? Lawrence mentioned there's the app that you can follow along with. It's either the U version, you can find the, 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 the devotion there, or it's on um, the Every Nation website, the Every Nation app. Um, there's the PDF that's being sent around, various WhatsApp groups we can, we, we, we're sending the PDF. But won't you choose to follow it? Would you choose to choose to dedicate yourself to this this week and say, God, I want to get on board. I want to get with you and surrender as to what you're wanting to do in and through me this week. Join a prayer meeting, as Lauren said. We're going to be praying throughout the week. Why don't you come along to one of those? And again, with the prayer and fasting, it's, it's prayer and fasting. Just fasting. Am I still on? Yes. But it's praying. Praying alone, praying corporately, praying together. There's power in coming together and praying. So I'd encourage you to come along one night this week to join one of those prayer meetings. So the bonus question the last question is, will you do it? As we prepare to, to land this, will you do it? I can't, I can't make you do it. No one can force you to do it. It's up to you. Between you and God, will you choose to fast and pray and to consecrate yourself what God wants to do in and through you this week? Will you dedicate yourself and all that you are? Will you say yes to Jesus and his call where he says, who would follow me? He must take up his cross. He must deny himself. You see, the thing that can keep us from consecration can be fear or love. Fear of missing out. Fear of losing control. Or it can be a love of ourselves and a love of what we're actually wanting to do. A love of the world, perhaps. So those are the things that can keep us from consecration. Those are those things that can keep us from doing, to partner with what he's wanting to do this year. And I would encourage us to take that step, choose to, uh, to follow, to say yes to what he's asking. So in terms of a response, will you, how will you? It's a response question slide there, Sam. Will you choose and how will you do it? Take a moment right now even just to think about that. What are you going to do this week in terms of your response, your personal response to fasting and consecration and praying. And then secondly, let's pray together. Let's just pray a prayer of consecration. Pray a prayer of dedication to God right now. So I'd encourage you to stand and to just think, to just take a moment right now. We've been talking about Surrendering ourselves for what God wants to do this year. It's not just business as usual. We don't just continue and expect things to change, expect the extraordinary to happen. But we have a choice. We're standing on the edge of the river, so to speak. And we've got a choice. Will we consecrate ourselves? Will we choose to partner with what God wants to do? And there's such power and effectiveness when we 
things together corporately. You can fast any time you like. But there's power when we come together corporately to choose to pray together, to raise our expectation and belief for God to do the supernatural, for God to do those signs and wonders. We're going to be starting the series next week where we're examining these miracles that God speaks about, that the Bible tells us about. We want to experience these things. We want to begin to expect these things in our own lives. But before we experience this incredible next day, we start today. Before the tomorrow, we start today. What we can do today. So take a moment and think how you might respond. And then there's a, there's a, there's a slide there with a, pray, a prayer. So let's just read through that by yourself. Get familiar with it, and then we're going to read it together if you want to pray this prayer. So just take a moment and have a look at it. Read through it. And if that's a prayer you want to pray, we're going to pray it out loud together in a few seconds. Okay, let's pray together. Lord God, here we are, as a people who want to surrender wholly to you for your purposes. We choose this day, standing at the beginning of a new year, to dedicate ourselves to you and your purposes. All of us, for all of you, Lord. Help us, Father, to hold nothing back. Thank you for your grace that enables us and empowers us to commit to your plans and purposes for us as individuals and as your church. We are expectant for you to move in 2023, Lord Jesus. May your kingdom come, may your will be done, in Slough as in heaven. Amen, amen. I'm going to invite Lawrence back up. Um, we're going to take some communion now. and Lawrence is going to lead us into that, and then maybe we'll have a, a final song with Eddie and the band. But Lawrence, won't you lead us, man?